Hopefully the, uh, the next vlog isn't me being eaten by a bear. Hi guys, it's John here with Tour Radar and Cost Saver Travel. Now I'm here in Vancouver. To be precise, I'm in Stanley Park, which is just north of Vancouver Island. Uh, just checking it out before we meet our travel director this afternoon. We've got a bit of free time. Uh, so yeah, the weather isn't great, but this place is still amazing. I had some recommendations. To, um, it's still fine to come here during the uh, bad weather, and it is, it is amazing. And we've got uh, Whistler, Banff, Jasper National Park, Victoria, all on the schedule, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. I've been wanting to come to Canada for a long time. This incredible tour covers the best that Alberta and British Columbia have to offer. And with a huge variety of activities for you to choose from, you can explore in your own way and at your own pace. So good afternoon, guys. Um, we've just arrived here in our hotel in Victoria um, on Vancouver Island. It's the very southern point of uh, Vancouver Island. We got the ferry from Vancouver mainland to here today and we've just driven towards our hotel. We are, s we are staying in Victoria and we're about to go to, just got a map here. We're just chilling in our rooms for about 15 minutes before we head down to see the main main harbour area. It'll be very cool. I think, we're gonna, I think I'm going to walk all the way along around here. So I'll see you in, in, the, in the main town, in the city. This is the legislative building of British Columbia behind me. I just think it's a pretty cool building to check out. And if you spin it around this way, you can see the sea down there. So I'm going to just walk down there and apparently it's a really nice walk all the way around. See, it's here along the waterfront and there's something just behind me, over here that's caught my eye. There are constantly, constantly seaplanes landing. Oh, you can hear them in the background. Oh, no, 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 that's not one. Ah, there we go, there's one. Victoria was an absolutely beautiful place to walk around with tons of stuff to see and do right on the waterfront. So I'm currently on Fisherman's Wharf now, checking it out, walking around. Some really cool little shops, food places and, I don't know, houses I guess, people that live here. It's really cool. So it is the start of another glorious day here in Victoria. This is my breath today. It's about half seven in the morning and we've come down to Bouchard Gardens. You can see just behind me, I'll show you the sign in a sec. Uh, we're having some breakfast this morning and then we're gonna go and walk around the grounds. It's, apparently it's huge. Um, we've got until 11 o'clock here, so we've got plenty of time to explore. So this is something I've always wanted to do, we'll see. I wanted to stand under a redwood. Two redwoods in fact. Not even a hundred years old yet, it's just a baby. Leaving my favourite tree at Bushart Gardens was tough, but I had to do it because we were off on another epic adventure. We traded land for sea and we set sail out into the strait between the USA and Canada in search of whales. Okay, I'll just flip the camera around in a second, but there is an absolutely monstrous waterfall. This is what we're coming to see. It's called Shannon Falls. Pretty spin it around. I love the way Cost Saver planned some amazing stops for us along the way to break up long drives. For example, here at Shannon Falls between Vancouver and Whistler. Just wrapped in Whistler. 
uh, walking around the village now. We've got some free time in the evening uh, before we've got our day full of activities tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, there's a little cool little walkway path thing around here that I'm walking through. I'm supposed to chill and then just through there. It's quite bright, but um, just there's the Whistler Library. Really cool. You can walk around it and check out some history on skiing, all this kind of stuff. Just about to head up to the zip lining in the buggy. You ready? <laughs> During the free time we have in each location, we had the opportunity to pick our own extras, making our adventure as high paced or as relaxing as we like. On this particular day, a few of us chose to go zip lining, some went in a seaplane, and others chose just to walk around Worcester Village. Perfect. Nice guys! Oh. <laughs> yeah, so that one, oh, I can't remember how long that one was, but it was a few hundred meters. Walking to the next zip line at the moment with all the stuff. It is an amazing day. Look at that. Nailed it. Next. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I'm like what? They were trying to. I thought the cougar got you. Yeah, it was just uh, uh, yeah, I was close. Forward. I had to fight my off real quick and then. <laughs> yeah. Last zip line of the day. Me and my man Dave going down together. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ready? Come on, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to hold hands? You can if no, you No, I need to operate this camera. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, Dave. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Two, one, boom! After an epic morning of zip lining, I've come here to the Lost Lake Trail where I'm trying to find the Lost Lake. Hopefully I can find it. We've got a full free day today. Some people have gone on the, um, on the seaplane over the glacier. I did this, the zip lining. Um, other people were just walking around, just chilling out. It's amazing how much free time you get. But you get enough info, um, enough info from the travel director um, to make an educated guess on what you want to do, depending on how active you're feeling or what you kind of want to do and see. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Really good that we've got some free time to explore all around Worcester. So I'm still alive. I haven't been attacked by bears just yet. I haven't seen any bears yet. I think I want to see one. But from quite far away, that'd be awesome. And off I went in search for some bears, walking around the whole of the Lost Lake, which wasn't actually that hard to find. Not really sure how they lost it in the first place. Oh, Dave, what are you up to? Stephen, let's clean himself, mate. You should try it one time. Uh, nah, I'm alright. Nah, I can't be bothered, to be honest, mate. I'm just waiting for some of those tourists to throw some bread in. Oh. Steve, you only ate, only ate an hour ago. You can't be hungry again. So from Whistler to Sun Peaks to Jasper, never have I just stared out the window for so long in my life. The scenery was absolutely incredible. Before arriving in Jasper though, we stopped at Mount Robson National Park, probably one of the coolest pit stops I've ever had. The real question is, am I as big as a moose? Six month old moose. Uh, after a day around Sun Peaks yesterday, uh, we've, had, we've got another travel day today. Um, we left Sun Peaks this morning and we're on our way to Jasper National Park. Now we stopped here in, let's zoom over there, Mount Robson Provincial Park. Um, and behind me, I'll zoom around in a sec, just up there, is Mount Robson, which is the tallest mountain in the Canadian Rockies. It's at 3,954 meters high. Look at the mountain just here, through the cloud. But yeah, we've got an hour to walk around. So yeah, I'm gonna walk around. There's loads of uh, rivers there. The Fraser River runs through here as well. And yes, we're officially in the Canadian Rockies now, which is super, super exciting. Usual check-in. I've been doing quite a lot recently, but I've just been passed by two hikers that have said literally just up here, they've just seen two grizzlies, which I like. Supposedly pretty big. Oh, I should turn back. Oh, 
I can see the lake I want to go to literally just there. Oh, oh it's just there, it's just there. If I see them before they see me, I should be fine. Still alive, done what I wanted to do. This is very, very exciting. Just walking around here, just the space is just so vast, like so many trees, there's so much open land, it's, it's crazy. It has been snowing all night, but it's only delayed a little bit. Check out what we're getting picked up in. It's like a really cool school bus. That is pretty cool. See, we had a, tw a, three, a three meter base on our hill. Absolutely amazing. It's all kitted up. It's very exciting. We've just arrived here at the uh, raft place. You can see the raft just down there. Amazing day for it. The river looks really nice and blue. Um, and the rest of the crew are just getting kitted up in there with their ponchos. Very stylish live trackings as well. Um, yeah. Oh, we saw some elk on the way down, which is super cool. Uh, add in elk video now. The Bean and the Travel Director had organised an excursion for us, a rafting down the river in the Canadian Rockies. Although it was optional, everyone decided they wanted to join and what an absolutely awesome experience it was. We're on the raft now. Don't worry, once we get to the waterfall, it's all downhill for me. <laughs> <laughs> really easy. Really good rafting instructor. So in oh, check out the water. <laughs> so magical. Looking good at my poncho, my life vest. Everything's got like a white sheen. I'm not gonna lie, we're probably not all gonna make it, but... <laughs> Hopefully I make it. It's stronger for me. Is it Evan? to warm back up and then we're heading out to a lake walk hike thing in a bit we do whatever we want to do I think some people are gonna sit in the cafe and look at the lake and stuff and other people are gonna have a little walk around so I think I won't do the walk but I'll check back in with you guys there so again we set off through the breathtaking Canadian Rockies to higher ground the air was colder the snow was thicker and the scenery got even more beautiful we eventually arrived at Moline Lake, which was over 5,600 feet above sea level and had some free time to explore. I'm having a quick snowball fight. We're actually on a ferry across the lake in a bit. Uh, the travel director, Rabina, is just picking up our tickets for us, so she's going to sort everything for us, which is awesome. All we do is just chill here, look at the view, and have a snowball fight. Just big kids there. Oh. Just can't control them, honestly. But yeah, we're making the most of it. Uh oh, I don't like what's behind me. There's like a posse of people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Love the fact we got the opportunity to travel across the lake to Spirit Island. This was another highlight for the group, amongst many, as we all just sat and stared at the views as the skippers gave us some interesting facts about the lake. So we made it here to Spirit Island. Is stunning and the mountains are just starting to come through too. Let me spin it around. It's getting quite sunny now as well. Check out those mountains. Maline, Maline, it is Maline, spelt really weird. Maline Lake. 
couple of facts for you. Only, only a couple. This is the largest glacial fed lake in Canada. And this mountain range we're in at the moment is actually a J shape. So now usually mountain ranges are formed in straight lines, along fault lines. Um, but this is actually, yes, yeah, it's a form, it's, it's another curve or like a J or, you know, not perfect, but it is, you know, that shape. And it only happens in about 10% of mountain ranges formed around the world, which is quite rare. So yeah, just chilling on this lovely beach on the lake, on the lookout for some wildlife. And it's so beautiful here. After the boat tour, we had some more free time to walk and explore around the lake. It looked even more magical as the snow started to fall. Jasper Town this morning and we're on our way to Banff. Now we've come to this awesome spot where um, there's uh, Athabasca Falls which is the most powerful waterfall in the Canadian Rockies. It's not the biggest, it's not the widest but it's the biggest concentration of water funneling into a spot and then going down I guess. But yeah it's really it's huge just up there um, and it's so loud and it just it looks really powerful. So I'll try and get to a better vantage point here. So I'll show you one of the main bits. This is another section. So we've got this bit here and then that bit makes the top there as one waterfall. Canyon just behind me. This is the Athabasca River, which is the same river as we were rafting on yesterday. Uh, I think we were a bit further upstream though. Um, were we downstream? No, we were further upstream, we were further upstream. Okay, we've just arrived here. We're just about to go on a glacier walk in the ice field, along the Icefields Parkway. The sun is coming out, you can see the mountains bursting through behind me. I have a feeling, I have a feeling they're going to reveal themselves, themselves finally today. Right, we've got to the foot of the glacier and we're transferring from the coach into one of the things just behind, which is an ice explorer. Check this out. As we drove down the track into the mountain valley, things got a bit more surreal as he made a turn and literally started driving over the glacier. We were on top of a 300 meter thick sheet of moving ice and snow. This was bittersweet as we found out that the glacier could be gone within a generation and we all just felt humbled to be able to experience such an incredible moment. Still can't believe I'm walking on a glacier in the Rocky Mountains, this is insane. The scenery is so good. the end of our ice exploration on the glacier but I had an absolutely amazing time. Uh, one of the best things I said I've ever done. A uh, quick thing about these ice explorers, quick fun fact, um, there are 26 ice explorers in the world uh, and 24 of them are here in the Athabasca Glacier region. The other two are in Antarctica and owned by the US and Australia which is super cool. So I feel pretty honoured to ride on one of these. Very, very cool. I'm from Banff and I'm in my hotel room at the moment. I've got this huge balcony all to myself which is amazing and one of the best views I've ever had in a hotel room. Now just behind me, again I'll spin it around in a sec, Cascade Mountain. 
and other mountains and other mountains and Banff Town is just through that way, just a short walk. In the evening, we had the opportunity to go out and explore the town and found some pretty cool bars and restaurants. I'm in a gondola on my own, heading up to the top of the mountain just here. The other groups are in the other gondolas ahead of me. Oh, check out the views. Perfect day for it. Oh, optional extra, but I think most people are doing it. These views are amazing. As if this place could get any cooler, check out the name of this mountain range. Sundance Range. I want to see some behind the scenes of me taking a photo of myself. Camera is in here. Set my timer. Profile pick. Cost Saver had organised that epic hotel for us in Banff. So after the rest of the day exploring the town, I fell asleep that night staring out my windows at the mountains. It was perfect. The next day we journeyed toward one of the most famous, the most photographed, the most beautiful places in the Canadian Rockies, somewhere I'd been wanted to go to for so many years. Guys, it's a very cold morning here in Alberta, it's about minus two, um, and I am at um, the place where it's been the top of my bucket list for many years now. Some of you may recognise this place, but if you don't, it's Lake Louise. There's a huge glacier right at the end there. It looks amazing. Yeah, we got here pretty early to beat the uh, beat the crowds, but it's not even that busy. There's a huge chateau thing hotel here that costs a thousand dollars a night to stay. I'd love to stay there. From the morning in Lake Louise, we were in the Okanagan Valley in the afternoon, Rabina the travel director's hometown. What a huge contrast it was, but both equally as enjoyable as we arrived in time for some wine tasting. So it's crazy to think that this morning we were in Banff in the snow and now we're in Kelowna in 20 degree heat. A lot warmer than it has been, but we're at Summer Hill Estate Winery at the moment and we're just wine tasting. Really, really nice wines. 20, 26 times in a row award winning wine. Gold medal, well on them. about to try an ice wine, which is where the grapes are frozen first. It's supposed to be really sweet, like a dessert wine. Oh wow, that's dangerous, it tastes like grape juice. It was awesome that the tour had been arranged to start and finish in Vancouver, which was really useful for us international travellers. And before we hit the centre of Vancouver, those that were leaving us that day were dropped off at the airport for their convenience. I'd seen the north side of the island as I arrived into Canada, so on my last day it was awesome to see downtown. I walked around Granville Island and Chinatown, which was an amazing end to an amazing tour. But there was one thing that was missing. I hadn't yet seen one of those elusive bears. Until suddenly... As you could probably tell, I really enjoyed my time in Canada with Cost Saver. What I loved is that they included all of the essentials of a tour whilst giving me the opportunity to tailor it based on my interests, which is great in a world where being able to travel in the way that suits you is so important. 
If this video has enticed you to visit Canada, or you want to learn more about Kosovo in Canada, visit the link I've put in the description below or head over to the Tour Radar website for all your travel needs.